It was Wednesday, March the 10th, 2004. And how do you remember that date so well? This was a uh, very memorable uh, period in my life, probably the most difficult time in my entire professional life. And that night was probably the most difficult night of my professional life. So it's not something I forget. Okay. Were you present when Alberto Gonzalez visited Attorney General Ashcroft's bedside? Yes. And am I con correct that the conduct of Mr. Gonzalez and Mr. Card on that evening troubled you greatly? Yes. Okay. Let me go back and take it from the top. You rushed to the hospital that evening. Why? I'm only hesitating because I need to explain why. Please. I give I've, you all the time you okay. need, sir. I've, I've uh, actually thought quite a bit over the last three years about how I would answer that question if it was ever asked because I assumed that at some point I would have to testify about it. Uh, the one thing I'm not going to do and be very, very careful about is that because this involved a classified program, I'm not going to get anywhere near classified information. I'm also uh, am very leery of and will not reveal the content of advice I gave as a lawyer, or deliberations I engaged in. I think it's very important for the Department of Justice that someone who held my position not do that. Uh, Terms of privilege. Yes, sir. Understood. Uh, subject to that, I... I and I'm uncomfortable talking about this, but I, I I'll answer the question. I, I, to understand what happened that night, I kind of got to back up about a week. Please. Uh, in the early part of 2004, the Department of Justice was engaged, the Office of Legal Counsel, under my supervision, in a reevaluation, both factually and legally, of a particular classified program. And it was a program that was renewed on a regular basis and required signature by the Attorney General certifying to its legality. And the, and I remember the precise date, that the program had to be renewed by March the 11th, which was a Thursday of 2004. And we were engaged in a very intensive reevaluation of the matter. And a week before that March 11th deadline, I had a <coughs> private meeting with the Attorney General for an hour, just the two of us. And I laid out for him what we had learned and what our analysis was of this particular matter. And uh, at the end of that hour-long private session, he and I agreed on a course of action. And within hours, he was stricken and taken very, very ill. You thought, just, you thought something was wrong with how it was being operated or administered or overseen? It, we, we had, yes, we had concerns uh, as to our ability to certify its legality and which was our obligation for the program to be renewed. The Attorney General was taken that very afternoon to George Washington Hospital, where he went into intensive care and remained there for over a week, and I became the acting Attorney General. And over the next week, particularly the, the following week on Tuesday, we communicated to the relevant parties at the White House and, and elsewhere our decision that, as acting Attorney General, I would not certify the program as to its legality and explained our reasoning in detail, which I will not go into here, nor am I confirming it's any particular program. That was Tuesday that we communicated that. The next day was Wednesday, March the 10th, the night of the hospital incident, and I was headed home at about 8 o'clock that evening. My security detail was driving me, and I remember exactly where I was on Constitution Avenue and got a call from Attorney General Ashcroft's chief of staff telling me that he had gotten What's a call. his name? David Ayers. That he had gotten a call from Mrs. Ashcroft from the hospital. She had banned all visitors and all phone calls. So I hadn't seen him or talked to him because he was very ill. And Mrs. Ashcroft reported that a call had come through and that as a result of that call, Mr. Card and Mr. Gonzalez were on their way to the hospital to see Mr. Ashcroft. Do you have any idea who that call was from? I have some recollection that the call was from the president himself, but I don't know that for sure. It came from the White House, and it came through, and uh, the call was taken in the hospital. So I hung up the phone, immediately called my chief of staff, uh, told him to get as many of my people as possible to the hospital immediately. I hung up, called Director Mueller, and with whom I'd been discussing this particular matter, 
and who had been a great help to me over that week, and told him what was happening. He said, I'll meet you at the hospital right now. Told my security detail that I need to get to George Washington Hospital immediately. They turned on the emergency equipment and drove very quickly to the hospital. I got out of the car and ran up, literally ran up the stairs with my security detail. What was your concern? You were in, obviously, a huge hurry. I was concerned that, given how ill I knew the Attorney General was, that there might be an effort to ask him to overrule me when he was in no condition to do that. Right. Okay. I, I was worried about him, frankly. And so I raced to the hospital room, uh, entered, and uh, Mrs. Ashcroft was standing by the hospital bed. Uh, Mr. Ashcroft was lying down in the bed. The room was darkened. And I immediately began speaking to him, trying to orient him as to time and place, and try to see if he could focus on what was happening. And it wasn't clear to me that he could. He seemed pretty bad off. And, and at that point, it was you, Mrs. Ashcroft, and the Attorney General, and maybe medical personnel in the room. No other Justice Department or just the government three of officials. Us. Just the three of us at that point. Uh, I tried to see if I could help him get oriented. As I said, it wasn't clear that I had succeeded. I went out in the hallway, spoke to Director Mueller by phone. He was on his way. Um, he, I handed the phone to the head of the security detail, and Director Mueller instructed the FBI agents present not to allow me to be removed from the room under any circumstances. And I went back in the room. I was shortly joined by the head of the Office of Legal Counsel, Assistant Attorney General Jack Goldsmith, and a senior staffer of mine who had worked on this matter an associate deputy attorney general. So the three of us, Justice Department people, went in the room. I sat down. Can you just give us the names of the two other people? It's Jack Goldsmith, who was the assistant attorney general, and Patrick Philbin, who was associate deputy attorney general. <coughs> I sat down in an armchair by the head of the attorney general's bed. The two other Justice Department people stood behind me. And Mrs. Ashcroft stood by the bed holding her husband's arm, and we waited. And it was only a matter of minutes that the door opened and in walked uh, Mr. Gonzalez carrying an envelope and Mr. Card. They came over and stood by the bed, greeted the Attorney General very briefly, and then Mr. Gonzalez began to discuss why they were there to seek his approval for a matter and explain what the matter was, which I will not do. And uh, Attorney General Ashcroft then stunned me uh, he lifted his head off the pillow and in very strong terms expressed his view of the matter, rich in both substance and fact, which stunned me, drawn from the hour-long meeting we'd had a week earlier, and in very strong terms expressed himself, and then uh, laid his head back down on the pillow, uh, seemed spent, and said to them, but that doesn't matter because I'm not the Attorney General. But he expressed his reluctance or his, he would not sign the statement that they give, give the authorization that they had asked. Is that right? Yes. And as he laid back down, he said, but that doesn't matter because I'm not the Attorney General. There is the Attorney General. And he pointed to me when I was just to his left. Uh, the two men did not acknowledge me. They turned and walked from the room. Uh, and within just a few moments after that, Director Mueller arrived. Uh, I told him quickly what had happened. He had a brief, uh, re memorable, brief exchange with the Attorney General, and then we went outside in the hallway. Um, okay. Now, uh, just a few more points on that meeting. First, am I correct that it was Mr. Gonzalez who did just about all of the talking? Mr. Card said very little. Yes, sir. Okay. And they made it clear that uh, uh, that there was in this envelope an authorization that they hoped uh, Mr. Ashcroft, Attorney General Ashcroft, would sign. In, in substance, I don't know exactly yes. the words, but it was clear that's what the envelope was. And the Attorney General was, what was his condition? I mean, he was, he had pancreas, as I understand it, he had pancreatitis. He was very, very ill, in critical condition, in fact. He was very ill. I don't know how the doctors graded his condition. This was, this would have been his sixth day in intensive care. And as I said, I was shocked when I walked in the room and very concerned as I tried to get him to focus. 
Right. Okay, let's continue. Uh, what happened after Mr. Gonzalez and Card left? Did you have any contact with them in the next uh, little while? While I was talking to Director Mueller, an agent came up to us and said that, that I had an urgent call in the command center, which was right next door. They had Attorney General Ashcroft in the hallway by himself, and there was an empty room next door uh, that was the command center. And he said it was Mr. Card wanting to speak to me. I took the call. Uh, Mr. Card was very upset uh, and demanded that I come to the White House immediately. I responded that after the conduct I had just witnessed, I would not meet with him without a witness present. Uh, he replied, what conduct? We were just there to wish him well. And I said again, uh, I, after what I just witnessed, I will not meet with you without a witness, and I intend that witness to be the Solicitor General of the United States. That would be Mr. Olson. Yes, sir. Ted Olson. And until right. I can connect with Mr. Olson, I'm not going to meet with you. He asked whether I was refusing to come to the White House. I said, no, sir, I'm not. I'll be there. I need to go back to the Department of Justice first. And then I reached out through the command center for Mr. Olson, who was at a dinner party. And Mr. Olson and the other leadership of the Department of Justice immediately went to the department where we sat down together in a conference room.